So, I'm going to begin this video with a story, kind of a legend, I guess, um, and it involves a mathematician named Friedrich Gauss. And so the legend goes that uh, when he was in kindergarten or grade school, he was sort of acting up, and probably because he was bored, and the teacher, as a punishment, said that he needed to go into the corner and uh, add up the numbers from 1 to 100. And so thinking that this would take roughly the rest of the afternoon, the teacher was surprised when Gauss came back with the answer in about 30 seconds. And so what we're going to do in this video is explore the technique that he used and then maybe formalize it in a, in a later video to see how it can be used uh, in other, other areas. So this is what he did. He said, the sum of the first hundred numbers can be written like this. One plus two plus three plus four, etc. plus ninety nine plus 100. And he said, I'm going to call that sum s. But then he said, well, I could also write it like this. s is the same as, just starting with 100, 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 97, and just going down instead of going up, plus 2. plus one plus one so then he said okay well I'm just gonna add these two equations together so s plus s gives me 2s and watch what happens here 1 plus 100 is 101 2 plus 99 is 101 3 plus 98 is 101 4 plus 97 is 101 and all the terms added up are going to sum to 101. And so this is useful because I've got 101. Well, how many 101s do I have added, being added up? Well, if you just kind of associate each term with these numbers here, you'll notice that there's 100 of them. So there are 100. 101s. And so another way to write that sum is to say 2s is equal to 101 times 100, since there are 100 of them. And now I can just solve this tra uh, equation, dividing both sides by 2, to get that my sum equals 101 times 100 divided by 2. That's the same as 101 divided by 50, if I do the 100 divided by 2. And that's 5,050. So I'd say that's pretty smart for a, for a kindergartner. Um, so this is a, the first example that makes sense looking at. We're going to look at a different one. Uh, in the next example, I want you to sort of notice what makes this next example a little more difficult than this one. All right, so here we're going to use Gauss's method again. This time it says find the sum of the numbers 3 plus 8 plus 13 plus 18, etc., plus 93, plus 98. So let's go ahead and try using Gauss's method. So he would say that the sum is equal to 3 plus 8 plus 13 plus 18 plus 93 plus 98, and then he would write them in descending order, the same sum, 98 plus 93 plus, um, that would be subtracting 5, 88, plus 8, plus 3. So again, notice I'm just, I'm writing them in uh writing the same sum but in descending order. And I knew that that was an 88. The reason I knew that was an 88 was because I noticed that these numbers are going up by 5 every single time. And so I knew that 
if I wanted to use the pattern in reverse, 98 plus, um, minus 5 gets me to 93, minus 5 gets me to, to 88. So that's kind of an important thing, which I'll mention later. But let's go ahead and try. We add the two equations together, and I get 2s equals 93, uh, 98 plus 3 is 101. 93 plus 8 is 101. 88 plus 13 is 101. So again, I'm getting the same number over and over again until the last two I get 101 plus 101. Now I think what makes this problem a little more difficult is in, in the first example we were adding up the numbers from 1 to 100. It was really obvious how many numbers there were. In other words, we knew that we were adding up 101 a hundred times. This is a little more difficult because I don't really know how many hundred and ones I'm, I'm adding. It's not obvious, right? Because this number is called 3, this is called 8, that's 13. They're not really allowing me to index the number of hundred and ones I'm adding. So I'm going to draw your attention to that right now and we're going to go solve this problem. But the, the, the problem now is how many 101s are we adding up? Okay, that's the question. So let's go off to the side and let's um, let's put these numbers in a table because we're we're gonna have to use some of our knowledge of functions in order to to, to answer this question. So I'm gonna put an n here and I'm gonna just call this column f of n. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my first number is a 3. My second number that I'm adding is an 8. The third number I'm adding is a 13. The fourth one I'm adding is an 18, etc. And so the question I want to ask myself is, the last number on my list is 98. What n value should go with 98? That's the question I need to answer. If I can figure that out, I'll know how many numbers there are, right? Because 3, 8, 13, 18 give me the first four. If I could only figure out what the 98th number is in the list, um, I'm not, sorry, that's not what I meant. What I meant to say is what number in the list is 98? That's what I meant to say. So, um, so let's figure this out. Well, if I plot these points on this conveniently placed graph above, you'll notice something that will help us figure out the, the rule that will connect us from the input to the output here. So if I plot the point 1, 3, it looks like that. If I plot 2, 8, it looks like that. And if I plot just one more, 3, 13, it looks like that. And so what you'll notice is um, this is a a line. And so what do we know about lines? Well, one thing we know is the slope. Um, the slope in this case would be, well, to get from my 3 to my 8, I know I'm going up 5. And to get from my 1 to my 2, I'm going over 1. Um, that could also be seen here. I'm going up 5 every time I go up 1. And so the point is, I can view this as uh, this is my slope. So my slope is 5 over 1. By the way, I should probably label these axes. That's an n, and the y-axis is f of n. So this is useful because I'm going to use my good old y equals mx plus b form to figure out a rule. So m we know is a 5 because right, that's our slope. And so let's go ahead and use that. So I've got, instead of a y, I'm going to say f of n. And that equals 5, and instead of an x, I'm going to use an n. Plus, now I'm going to put a blank here, and we're just going to do a little guess and check. So I know that when I get, for instance, when I plug in a 1, I'm supposed to get out a 3. When I plug in a 1 into this as it is, I get out a 5. f of 1 right now is 5 times 1. So if I want it to become a 3, I need to fix that. 
So how would I fix it? Well, I need to minus a 2. All right, so that was important, the, the, the reasoning I just did there. I know that my rule has to produce a 3 when I input 1. Right now, it's just input, uh, it's outputting a 5. I'm going to minus 2 to fix that. And so now what do I want to know? Well, I know that my, when my output is 98, I'm trying to figure out what my input is. So I'm going to put a 98 in the output spot. And then I'm going to solve this little equation for my n. So this becomes 100 equals 5n. And that means n is equal to 20. So that's the that was that mystery number. I know now that 98 is the 20th number in the list. And that means that there are 20 101s. So now I can solve. 2s equals 101 times 20. And now if I divide by 2, s equals 101 times 20 divided by 2 is 10. And so this gives me 1,010. All right, so same method. We just had to go on a little detour to figure out how many 101s we were adding up. But Gauss's method, um, very useful, very powerful, and very simple, very elegant, I would say, as well. Um, and so it's something I encourage you to get some practice with.